The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation has identified the man accused of shooting a Sullivan County Sheriff's deputy. 54-year-old Alan Coulter, pictured on your screen, is in custody tonight. Court documents show he has a lengthy criminal history. Investigators said Coulter was barricaded in a building on Riley Hollow Road. That was early this morning when they said he opened fire, striking the deputy, a deputy who remains hospitalized tonight in the Johnson City Medical Center. News Channel 11's Ashley Sharp joins us live from the scene in Sullivan County. And Ashley, you spoke with the TBI this afternoon. What's the latest on the investigation? Well, Josh, at this hour, those TBI agents are still here at the scene. Ashley, thanks. Now, News Channel 11 first arrived on scene about 5.30 this morning. Our videographer uh, took the video as gunshots were ringing out. Take a listen. We spoke with Sullivan County Sheriff Jeff Cassidy earlier this morning on what led to the standoff. The deputy uh, uh, saw him running. He went into an establishment here off of Riley Hall. Uh, deputies attempted to make contact with him. Uh, he shot around through the door, striking my deputy. News Channel 11's Amy Cockrum continues our team coverage live near Johnson City Medical Center where that deputy is being treated. Amy, what's the latest on the officer's condition? Breaking news today, a failure at Eastman Chemical Company in Kingsport sends a large plume of steam into the air and vibrations that were felt miles away. Several viewers flooded News Channel 11 this morning with reports of loud noises. They said sounded like an explosion at the facility. It happened about 730 this morning. Uh, this is video one viewer sent us. Now viewers all around that community also sent in videos and photos. Michael Fitch took this uh, footage telling us he heard a loud boom that quote shook the whole town end quote. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Sarah Diamond. Eastman says that explosion like sound came from a high pressure steam line failure at its complex. Five employees received minor injuries, according to the folks at Eastman. We have live team coverage of this breaking news. We're going to start with Bianca Murray, who's live at Eastman. Bianca, what has Eastman said about this steam line failure? Now, Ballot Health established an incident command center at Holston Valley Medical Center shortly after the Eastman steam line failure to help with any injuries. And Kelly Grossfield joins us now live from the medical center. Kelly, what has Eastman said about the employees who were injured? Kelly, thanks. That is good news. Now, people throughout that area in Kingsport reported seeing that large steam plume and hear, hearing loud noises, and several shared their accounts with us. Justin Murray says he was on Conorock Road about a quarter of a mile from Eastman's property. He said, quote, it rattled the windows in the warehouse. It was a loud explosion, and then we walked outside, and you could hear the echo for probably 15 seconds. That's according to Justin Murray, what he saw and heard. Russ and Amy Jower say they were running near their home more than five miles from the complex. They told us, quote, it was a huge rumble. It sort of sounded like it could have been a big cargo plane, but then it went on and on and on, end quote. Nick Dugan spoke with other community members. Nick, what did they tell you? Breaking news at six, day nine in the search for five-year-old Summer Wells, and investigators say they are heartbroken and extremely frustrated as the case is taking longer than usual to resolve. Thanks for joining us at six. I'm Sarah Diamond. I'm Josh Smith. Take a look at some new photos of Summer Wells that we obtained today. Summer's mother shared these with us. In a news briefing late this afternoon, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation said the search for Summer is, quote, definitely outside the norm when it comes to the standard amount of time for a missing persons case like this. Typically, in an investigation like this one, we have some idea of where the case is headed and what might have happened within a few days. In this situation, despite doing everything within our power and exploring all avenues, the circumstances leading to Summer's disappearance remain unclear. News Channel 11's John Jenko is at today's news briefing. John, are investigators hopeful at this point that they will find Summer? John, thank you very much. And we learn more today about the role of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in this case. It's one of more than 100 agencies taking part in the search for Summer. The FBI today said that it has deployed its child abduction rapid deployment team. They told us this a few days ago. Today, the FBI said their CARD team members consist of highly trained, experienced subject matter experts, including FBI agents, intelligence analysts, 
and behavioral an analysis profilers. The agency went on to say that this team provides assistance during non-family child abductions, also ransom child abductions, and what the FBI called mysterious disappearances of children. TBI says there are two aspects to this case, the search for Summer and the investigation into how she disappeared. Part of that investigation has involved looking into the family. As we reported earlier this week, Summer's father, Donald Wells, was arrested last year for domestic assault. News Channel 11's Amy Cockrum has been looking into Wells' criminal past and found he has also previously faced charges in other states. Josh and Sarah, I spent the day looking into Donald Wells' previous charges in Utah, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Amy, thanks. And we want to point out here that TBI says the Wells family has been very cooperative with investigators throughout their search efforts. Friends of the family tell us they're doing their best to keep their spirits up on day nine. News Channel 11's Bianca Murray joins us from the Beach Creek community where Summer was reported missing. Bianca, how do friends say the family's coping with this? Right, Bianca, thank you very much. And to all of our crews there tonight, take another look at Summer's photo. This is what matters most. If you see her, call the TBI. Investigators tonight are asking for people to call 1-800-TBI-FIND or tips can be emailed to tips to TBI at TN.gov. Tonight on News Channel 11 at 6, snow is staying on the ground in the Tri-Cities as temperatures will dip below freezing, well below freezing. You're taking a live look right here from Base Mountain. We're making sure you are prepared before heading on the roads tonight. Our team brings you live coverage of conditions next. Still watching light snow showers across the region, maybe a light additional accumulation, highest elevations, otherwise staying cold. That forecast coming up. While school is out, many have worked from home today. But the snow didn't stop tough Tennesseans, though, from getting out and about. We dress for it. You can dress for any kind of weather, so we stay warm. We just uh, want to stay safe. You'll see how some people in our region took advantage of today's winter weather and the school schedule changes in store for tomorrow next. Live, you're watching News Channel 11 at 6. Depending on where you are right now, several inches of snow are covering the ground tonight. Here's a live look at Appalachian State University, Boone, North Carolina, where more than a foot of snow fell. Light snow fell across lower elevations, but it was still enough for people to have fun. Viewer Lindsay Carmichael sent us this photo of Collins and Avalon having a lot of fun outside the Boone's Creek area. And they were not the only ones. We stopped by Science Hill High School in Johnson City, where a lot of kids were spending the afternoon sledding and throwing snowballs. Today's chilly temperatures will only get colder tonight. Many areas will dip down into the teens. News Channel 11's Nick Dugan starts our team coverage in Abingdon, Virginia. What are conditions like uh, there right now, Nick? Mark, thanks. We continue tonight's team coverage from the Model City. While Kingsport was spared from the first snow of the year, this time around, a lot different. There's quite a blanket there today. Kelly Grossfield is downtown with the latest on the conditions there, Kelly. The Tennessee Department of Transportation is reporting just some patches of snow and ice across northeast Tennessee tonight. Here's a live look at Interstate 81 in Sullivan County. That's the Fort Henry Drive interchange. Roads just fine. Bit of wet uh, pavement, but traffic appears to be running smoothly. Let's hope it stays that way throughout the night. Take a live look at uh, other heavily trafficked areas. This is Interstate 81 in southwest Virginia near Abington. Same site, just damp roads, traffic moving along just fine. Tri-Cities Airport, they weren't warned us last week, even before the storm, that it, we could see an impact in flights over the next few days, and that has certainly happened. Tonight, American Airlines flight uh, to uh, arrive from Charlotte at 930. You could see in red there, it's canceled. For departures, the Delta flight set to leave for Atlanta at 650 tonight. It is on a delay there in yellow. And the 7 a.m. American Airlines flight, that's going to come out tomorrow morning to Charlotte, already in red there, canceled. Tonight at 6, a big winter storm leaves parts of our area blanketed in snow. We're tracking how long the snow is expected to last and what's headed your way this week. Much of that snow turning into slush on the roads as the sun came out this afternoon, but uh, officials are now warning of the potential for ice as temperatures drop tonight. Road crews in one local city say they're starting work at midnight to clear the pavement. Once the snow starts, our trucks are on the road, ready to go. A look into the preparation along with how people feel about this first official snow day. Live, you're watching News Channel 11 at 6. 
A live look over Johnson City tonight. You can see the Tri-Cities first big snow of the new year and of the winter, really. It's sticking around as our temperatures drop below freezing. We have received dozens of viewer photos today, including this beautiful shot of the lights along Jonesboro's Main Street, just glistening in the snow. Thanks to John Duggar for that image. And down the road in Unicoi County, Candy Casey sent us uh, this photo. She says one side of the mountains covered in snow, the other half, well, they were just blank. Well, Irwin and Unicoi County was among the top six regional areas when it came to snow totals today. Here's the list behind me. Gatlinburg, nine inches of snow. Banner Oak, North Carolina. Camp Creek, Tennessee, right there at around seven inches. Irwin at six. Coburn at four. Johnson City, about three and a half inches of snow. Well, some areas of the Tri-Cities received several inches of snow. Others didn't see any. Uh, this was the view about noon today from our Bays Mountain camera. You can see snow way off in the distance, but really none in Kingsport to talk about. Our chief meteorologist Mark Reynolds joins us. Mark, we could see uh, some of that snow that people actually received turned yeah. to ice as our temperatures drop into the overnight hours. Yeah, we certainly could. And what's interesting about Kingsport, looking back at some of the latest radar data, it looks like some of that moisture was shifted back to the west, just a little bit the heavier rain, and that may have stopped them from getting the snow. You're watching News Channel 11 at 6. Today's sunny, warm afternoon wiped out nearly all the Tri-Cities' first big snowfall of the season. You're looking at a side-by-side -side comparison. Yeah, on the left is a shot at 6 o'clock last night along North State of Franklin Road in Johnson City. Roads were clear, but the ground still had snow. Now, 24 hours later, the blanket of white uh, has melted in most places. Chief Meteorologist Mark Reynolds is tracking the forecast. Mark, you're checking now on the possibility maybe of more snow later in the week. First up, multiple fires are burning in Northeast Tennessee as days of no rain and now, high winds fan the flames. The Tennessee Division of Forestry's website shows one active fire in Carter County on Mountain View Circle. The other is about 40 miles away in the Hawkins County area. That's Grassy Creek Road. You can see that smoke from Grassy Creek on that fire on our camera on Bays Mountain in Kingsport. There's the view shortly after 1 o'clock this afternoon. The Tennessee Division of Forestry shows this fire is now fully contained. So this is News Channel 11 photos of crews on the scene there. The Division of Forestry does not have an estimated size of that fire, but some families did evacuate their homes this afternoon. The Tennessee Department of Agriculture tonight says safe debris permits will not be issued statewide today because of high wind conditions creating what they called moderate to very high fire danger. So first up, let's talk about it with Chief Meteorologist Mark Reynolds. He's tracking the current weather conditions. And now part of the reason that we're seeing all of this flooding is because of yesterday's heavy rains that are continuing to swell some local rivers. We have a live look at the North Fork of the Holston River in Churchill. You can see that's River Road and it looks like a river. The National Weather Service reporting moderate flooding there at the river. Jeremy has been keeping an eye on those levels. Jeremy, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, certainly the North Fork of the Holston River there and near Gate City, especially in flood stage. We're not all not all area rivers are in the flood stage here, but uh, where you see the red dots here. The heavy rain is starting to cause issues here in the Tri-Cities this morning. Some roads flooding as we speak. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sydney Kessler. I'm Casey Marler. Kristen Gallant joins us live from Blountville, where crews have just pulled a truck out of a flooded road. Kristen, tell us about that rescue and what you see out there right now. Guys, I'm on a Buncombe Road here in Blountville in Sullivan County where we just witnessed a water rescue. Now, a man said he was coming to work this morning when he realized that the water was just too deep. But by then, it was too late for him to back up or go forward. Sullivan County Volunteer Fire Department and Sullivan County Sheriff's Office were on the scene this morning. They had to rescue that man out of his car. Mark, thanks. As you just saw in Mark's forecast, when it comes to looking at weather trends and predicting the weather, meteorologists use tools like an interactive radar. This is an interactive radar you see behind me. Next week, one of those radars in our region will be taken down for maintenance. Meteorologist Brittany Bowman reports on what our Storm Team 11 will do in the meantime to track those summer thunderstorms. Now, to stay ahead of the thunderstorms and rain showers in our area, you can head over to WJHL.com. Underneath the weather tab, you can find that interactive radar. Take a look at this. A North Carolina school is closed after a microburst blew out a wall and part 
of the roof. Wow. Amazing video with students inside that gymnasium at the time. Happened at Union Intermediate School's gymnasium. Cameras captured the moment that wall came crashing down. Students could be seen running away before the debris flew inside the gym. Now, some students were taken to a hospital for evaluation, but they have all been released. You can see that microburst right there below, and a couple students caught there in the damage. Now, Jeremy, officials say this was caused by a microburst, but what exactly is that? And Jeremy also following the latest on the tornado. Jeremy, can you tell us why it was able to cause so much damage over such a large space in Middle Tennessee? Yeah, very organized storm system, which, by the way, was classified as an EF3 tornado, which is almost equivalent uh, to a Category 5 hurricane winds uh, at about 160 miles an hour. Latest data, rather, from the Tennessee Department of Health shows that all of Northeast Tennessee counties have a limited supply of the COVID-19 vaccine tonight. Vaccination rates were updated less than an hour ago, and here we go in Washington County and Unicoit County. We've got more than 10% of the vaccination delivered to the population, at least one dose, that is. Sullivan County, there above 9% tonight. Hawkins Green and Carter Counties, you can see there around 6%. Johnson County here, just over 5%. To Virginia, the latest data Data shows that as of Monday, more than 7% of the population in our viewing area has received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine compared to the state's 5%. Now, let's break that down into each county in our viewing area. The numbers here on your screen. COVID-19 deaths are quickly increasing in Northeast Tennessee, as you can see in this chart. It took 160 days for our region to hit that milestone of 100 deaths. Kelly Grossfield tells us an increase in illegal dumping and vandalism has sparked since the pandemic began. Kelly, thanks. And right now on our website, we have a link to a map that is going to show you the problem sites on public land. And here is what this map looks like. It's interactive, so you can click on any of these dots here. When you click on them, you're going to see the information over here in this column. Now on WJHL.com's Facebook page, we've posted this poll. We want you to, to know, does your New Year's resolution include exercise? Now, so far, 36% say yes and 64 percent say no four three two one uh -huh. <laughs> christmas in the park is lit up in the plane earnhardt his family and two pilots are okay earnhardt taken to johnson city medical center for minor injuries but has since been released the faa says that the cessna citation business jet rolled off the end of runway 24 and caught fire after landing here at the Elizabeth municipal airport at about 3:40 yesterday afternoon Tracking COVID-19, Virginia is seeing a surge in new cases in the southwest region. Behind me is a breakdown of new daily COVID cases. Right now, law enforcement in Unicoi County investigating the scene where a body was found. Very few details have been released at this time. John Janko is outside the town of Irwin near the Nolichucky Gorge campground. That is the location of where that body was found and where police have been for much of the day. Take a look at the map here. This is from Johns Hopkins. This is a map you're familiar with. We've been showing uh, the numbers as they've grown over the last couple of months. Two million cases right now. You can see right over here. So what exactly does this order mean? Well, it means that if you live in Virginia, you must remain at home and can only leave for those essential activities. Tonight at 6, two controversial bills will appear before the Tennessee legislature tomorrow. Literally this year, 1,500 bills that have been filed. So if you're looking for, uh, boy, this one could have ramifications, there are lots of those. Local lawmakers' response to a proposed Texas style abortion bill and a Florida style LGBTQ bill. Business is booming in the heart of Johnson City. There are real, I think, jewel in the crown of a lot of these places. Why restaurants and shops are now buying up empty spaces. And Governor Bill Lee addresses issues with Tennessee's news, new license plate. It's been sent to hundreds of thousands of drivers. What he says is the solution coming up. Tonight at 6, our region is under a winter storm warning as snow is moving in overnight. We have live team coverage of that forecast and how crews are trying to keep the roads safe. Plus a big show of love, a local community gathering tonight to remember longtime basketball coach Charlie Bayless. We'll take you inside his memorial service. It has been more than two years since we've been together. I miss 
being with you. And I've missed being here. I'm Kelly Grossfield, live at Dollywood for opening day, and boy, do we have everything for you. We'll talk about some of the changes at the park. Yeah, and I'm Josh Smith. I got a chance to talk to Dolly Parton one-on-one. -on -one. More of our interview, more of her dreams for this place coming up in a moment. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. Tonight at 6, America under new leadership as President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are sworn into office and the new president already is taking action. We'll tell you about some just signed executive orders. Plus, National Guard soldiers from East Tennessee are on the ground in Washington, D.C. We certainly uh, certainly can uh, uh, execute this task. There's no there's no problem. Our soldiers are trained. Tonight, soldiers speak with News Channel 11 as they protect the U.S. Capitol on a historic day. Tonight at 6, the Tri-Cities under a winter storm warning. How much snow some areas could receive and when? Next. And I'm live in Jonesboro where a rubber compound facility continues to burn. Now at 2,000 gallons per minute, crews are still putting out hot spots from the fire. I'm live in Jonesboro at Hexville Compound with more. And some lawmakers calling to invoke the 25th Amendment after yesterday's attack on the U.S. Capitol. Coming up, you'll hear from a local professor who provided a breakdown on how the process would work and what it would mean for President Trump. Well, we just realized in here that they're playing the cha-cha slide. So if only you guys could see us during the commercial breaks because we've been dancing in here. Now the Daniel Boone Trailblazers take on the David Crockett Pioneers. That's at home tonight in gray. 640 now, welcome back. With less than one week until Halloween, the Tri-Cities region is getting into the spooky spirit with tons of fun events. That's right. Lots to enjoy, Sydney. And just down the road in gray, the Hands-On Discovery Center is holding its Booseum. Jeremy, thank you very much. It looks like Sydney has some special guests, some co-workers <laughs> in her new workspace. Who do you got there, Sydney? Yeah, Jeremy and Casey, I do say that, you know, I miss you guys as co-workers, but these two, they're a lot more cuddly than you guys are, <laughs> uh, although they are a lot louder and a lot more disruptive. <laughs> Tomorrow, a world-famous attraction that draws more than 2 million people to East Tennessee each year opens for a new season. Josh Smith joins us live from Dollywood, where today's season pass holders got an exclusive look at the park. Josh? Well, good evening, Sarah, and welcome uh, to Dollywood, the Smoky Mountain Paradise, the resort theme park. It's an incredible place, and Sarah, not only did those pass holders get a chance to get a sneak peek into what's new here at the park, they also got a chance to see, wait for it, Dolly Parton herself. Earlier today, she was in the park for a couple of events. She was in a parade through Dollywood this afternoon. Park goers very excited for a glimpse at the country music superstar. Dolly also appeared at an event this morning. She revealed to, to guests that this year, several festivals are in the works, ones that she says are going to be better than ever before. Sarah? And Josh, you got to sit down with Dolly today. I did, and it was an amazing opportunity to just sort of see what is on her mind these days. We covered a wide range of topics in our discussion, and she was not at a loss for words. It's been the first time, really, that she's been able to do these types of interviews since 2019. Unbelievable that someone of her star caliber would sit down and talk with a local journalist. It's her way of saying thank you, I think, to the community. 